Hello again and welcome to section 7.1 Deadlines and Constraints. In this section I'm going to first of all explain constraints and how we use them and we'll review the different types of constraint in Project 2013. We'll also discuss the role of constraints in scheduling. I'll then explain deadlines and their use and I'll discuss the differences between constraints and deadlines. So here we are at our building project and I'm going to add another task to this project. Now before I do, just let me point something out. At the moment I've got the whole project in view. You can see a vertical line there and the vertical line indicates today's date, the current date. Now if I add a task to the project, this is going to be a dummy task, so all I'm going to do is add a task and I'm just going to call it test because I'm actually not going to keep this task for very long anyway. Because of the way my options are set, that task is created on the project start date. So let's go back into the project options again. Go to the schedule tab and one of the options down there under scheduling options for this project is auto scheduled task scheduled on project start date. I'm now going to change it to the current date. Click on OK and I'm going to add another task. I'm going to call this one test 2. Now test 2 has been created on the current date as you would expect. Now let's go back to test itself first. Open up the task information dialog and this time we're going to look at the advanced tab because on the advanced tab there are two pieces of information that we're going to concentrate on in this section. One is deadline, we're going to come back to a little bit later on. The other one is constraint. And the constraint comprises one or two items. A constraint type and a constraint date. Now depending on the constraint type, you may or may not need a constraint date. By default, when you add a task to a project that's scheduled from its start date, the default constraint for the task is for the task to start as soon as possible. Now at the moment, because we haven't looked at scheduling in any kind of detail at the moment, it may not be apparent to you what the significance of as soon as possible is. But just to summarise the significance of it, as soon as possible means that as soon as all of the requirements for this task are in place, that task can start. The requirements could include the availability of resources. And they could include dependencies. We looked at dependencies earlier on. We'll be looking at them over the next couple of sections in quite a lot of detail. So when all of those requirements are in place, the task can start. Now, as soon as possible basically means that. If you schedule a project from the end date, then by default the constraint type will be as late as possible. Now there are many constraint types, so we have as late as possible, as soon as possible, finish no earlier than. If we specify finish no earlier than, it means this task mustn't finish before a date, and the date is specified in the constraint date. And the six other constraint types, not the top two, these six, all need a date. So finish no earlier than, finish no later than, must finish on, so that's the exact date, must start on, that's the exact date, start no earlier than, start no later than. So those are the eight constraint types, and of course we'll be looking at most of these during the rest of the course. Now let me just cancel that task information and look now at test two. This is the task that was added at the current date after I changed the project options. Let's have a look at the task information for that. This one has a constraint. And the fact that the date that the task was created to start on, today's date, is not the project start date, means that Project 2013 automatically added a constraint type that says start no earlier than today. Now I could, if I wanted to, remove that constraint. This is just the default 
behaviour of Project 2013. But in a situation where the project start date's in the past and you're creating new tasks on the current date, this is the constraint that's automatically added. Now this constraint basically is an additional scheduling factor. So when Project 2013 tries to work out a viable schedule for this project, it will take into account that this task should not start earlier than today. So basically with constraints in general we are telling projects scheduling engine a set of rules about each task. Now a task can only have actually one constraint. It may be constrained by other factors such as the availability of resources or dependencies on other tasks but it can only have one constraint. So let's now apply a constraint in a more practical situation. What I'm going to do is to delete those two tasks that I just added temporarily. There are, as you probably guess, a number of ways of deleting tasks. If I right click on test 2, for example, one of the options on the contextual menu there, just above midway, is delete task. And if I right click on the other one, I can either do the same thing again, or if I press the delete key on my keyboard, that achieves the same effect as well. Now let's look at a simple example of how constraints can work. Let's suppose that we've got the schedule you can see here, but the building of the walls is actually a much quicker job than we'd planned. And by putting some extra people on the job, we get it down from 15 days to 10. So let's just put that down to 10 days. Look carefully at the Gantt chart and the other dates when I do that. What happens is that it pulls the whole project in a week earlier than was originally planned. Now let me undo that, put everything back the way it was, and let me put a constraint on the fit roof task. Now let's suppose that because of some permits or insurance or something, I can't actually start that task earlier than April the 27th. So I'm going to say start no earlier than and I'm going to put in a date of April 27th. So for some reason I'm not actually allowed to start the job before then. Let me go back now and change build walls. Again I'm putting it from 15 days down to 10. Now watch what happens. You can see that the fit windows and doors task is able to move. That starts a week earlier but the fit roof task cannot move. So I've removed that constraint again. I just got one more thing to say about constraints at the moment. We will be using constraints extensively during the rest of the course. It's very important to understand when it comes to scheduling a project that generally speaking constraints must be satisfied and that if for some reason Microsoft Project can't create a schedule without potentially breaking constraints, you'll get messages similar to the one that we saw just now. The planning wizard will say to you, you can't do this or that will happen, and then you're going to have to make a choice between normally two or three options to decide how to proceed with your plan. Now in this section I also want to look at deadlines. And on the face of it, having a deadline for a task sounds pretty much like having a constraint on a task. But there are some very important differences. And the first important difference is the deadline, in effect, is informational only. If you set a deadline on a task and say, this must be finished by a certain date, if your schedule says that the task won't be finished by that date, the planning wizard won't say to you, hang on a minute, you've got to fix this because the schedule doesn't work anymore. You will receive visual indicators that the deadline is being missed, but you can go ahead and miss it. So you're talking about limitations on tasks which do not prevent or inhibit scheduling but which can be very useful. Now apart from the fact that deadlines aren't used by Microsoft Project when it tries to create a viable schedule for you, it does include deadline information, for example, in certain reports. So you can actually run off a report to say which deadlines are being missed, for example. So let's look at an example of a deadline. Let's suppose that our target for this project is to fit the roof by May the 15th. So if I double click on fit roof, I go to the advanced page 
and I set a deadline of May 15th. Note that is the current scheduled end date. If I click on general there, you can see that the finish date is May 15th. Click on OK. What happens, you might just be able to see it, is a little arrow on the row corresponding to fit roof. A little deadline arrow is visible. Now let me just make this schedule a really successful project schedule and say we're running ahead of schedule, we've built the walls in 10 days. Then you'll be able to see that deadline marker much more easily. So you can see that arrow indicating a deadline. On the other hand, if say fit windows and doors took five days longer and build walls took its original estimate of 15 days. You can't actually see the deadline marker now but if you look over in the information column on the left you'll see a red warning diamond. Now as I say you don't get a message from the planning wizard or something else saying you've got to change something because the schedule works but you do get visible warnings such as this one. Let me just hover over it. This task goes past its deadline on Friday May 15th. Now something I mentioned much earlier on in the course was that you can't schedule from a start date and to an end date. You have to choose one or the other. But I said there was a way that you could sort of get around that. And in fact you can use deadlines and for that matter constraints to sort of get down the limitation of either scheduling from start date or end date. For example by saying the project start date is this. But you could take the last task in the project and set either a constraint or a deadline on that. And depending on which one you set, project will enable you to identify whether you're going past that end date. Finally then, let's review the objectives for this section. I explained constraints and their use, and we review the different types of constraint that are available in Project 2013. I discussed the role of constraints in scheduling as well. I then explained deadlines and their use and discussed the differences between constraints and deadlines. That's it for this section. Please join me in the next one.